I dropped out of pharmacy school. That is what I did. Yes, I put the UK on, hands down. The live stream host for Shea Moisture. People in villages back in Naj are trying to attack me. So let's talk marriage. And I got flown out by my CEO. Once you build discipline in one aspect of your life, you build respect for yourself. Oh, keto is so 2016. How are you able to stay on track and stick to your daily goals? Why are you contacting me? That sounds a bit bizarre, like why 22? Life is about to be couldn't see straight but now I see straight I should have always known get your money up and I'll be trapped that's just not what a hot girl like me should be doing that was such a pivotal moment of my life in a matter of actual month hello my lovelies welcome back to my channel it's Chica Angel I've never done an official YouTube life update if you follow me on TikTok Instagram Snapchat you're probably up to date especially if you follow me on Snapchat so make sure you follow my Snapchat because I have been using that a lot recently and I talk to you guys on there for real. People love to tell me I'm such a private creator, I'm such a private personality because I post a lot. People have seen me for years, I've always been online but people don't actually know much about me. And there's so much about me that you guys could know. I'm trying to be a bit more open because I feel like my story can help people, motivate people, inspire people, specifically women. I do this for the girls, but if you're a guy, yeah, cool, welcome. I have a couple questions that you guys sent in. I'm gonna answer those towards the end. I've changed my name, you guys probably have noticed. I've changed it a couple months ago. So I used to go by Gucci Black on all my platforms, which is a name I made up when I was younger. If you're not aware, I started my first YouTube channel when I was about 12. And then my parents found it and they were like, this can't run, so I stopped it. Then I started posting on socials way more when I was around 18 and I went by Gucci Black. Just because I realised a lot of people knew my name but I didn't know these people and I wanted to be able to differentiate between people I actually know and people I don't know because how are you talking to me if you don't even know me for real? If you don't even know my name for real? And it really annoys me but I'm at a place where I just feel like that whole Gucci black thing is childish, I want to go by my name. I want to be as authentic as I possibly can online so I started off by scrapping that old name and swapping it with my actual name so my name is Chica Angel I do have another middle name but adding three names is just a bit much so we're just gonna go by Chica Angel for now some quick facts about me before we dive into the video I'm Nigerian, I'm Ibo and Yoruba I said this on TikTok and people went crazy people in villages back in Naj are trying to attack me let's not do that I'm Ibo and Yoruba don't tell me what I am, don't tell me what I'm not I'm both, thank you. I'm 22 and I'm so blessed to say that I'm 22 and this is a very blessed year and you'll find out why throughout this video. But yes, I'm 22. I make content about wellness, leveling up, all things to becoming your better self because that's literally the journey I'm on, the journey I've always been on. Even though along the way, I just get distracted a bit and some things did throw me off and I wasn't really pursuing the journey actively. For the past six months, at least six or seven months, I have actively been pursuing my journey to my best self and I've been seeing the progress. I want to share that journey with you and give you guys tips and advice. You guys often swipe up to my stories and ask me for tips and ask me for advice. Hopefully I can share my tips on my channel and you guys can access them more easily. So nobody gets left behind on this journey. I literally used to be in pharmacy school. I, I want to say I dropped out of pharmacy school, but yeah, I, I dropped out of pharmacy school. That is what I did. I was like, no, I'm not doing this. I studied pharmacy at university for a year and a month and I realised, wait a second, I'm actually miserable. I'm physically miserable. I'm crying. I'm literally crying, thinking about doing my assignments, thinking about going to lessons, thinking about going to the library. I was asking people around me, is this normal? Do you feel this way about your course? Because a part of me felt like, maybe I'm just a bit lazy, maybe I don't want to study. But I don't think that was the case. I think it was the fact I was studying pharmacy and it just was not for me at all. During that phase, I really wanted to drop out of uni because I didn't know what to study and I knew I wasn't studying pharmacy. But then I managed to find a course that I wanted to do and I started studying data analytics. And I feel like that was such a pivotal moment of my life because at that time when I was about to drop out of uni, when I dropped out of pharmacy school, I was going through breakdowns. I felt like I was depressed, I was going through it. I couldn't breathe. Actually, wait a second, I could breathe. I couldn't sleep straight, I couldn't eat straight. Like, oh. I was thinking, oh, I'm a failure, I came to uni for nothing, what am I even doing here, why did I even come here? But things happen, and I feel like when drastic things like that happen and you make a change or you make that pivot, that's when the trajectory of your life completely shifts. And you don't even know it. If I was still studying pharmacy, I would still be at uni. I, I still am at uni, but we'll get there. i will still be at uni, I'd be miserable, then I'll graduate, and I'll be a miserable pharmacist, and I'll be trapped either in a GP or in a hospital or something like that and that's just not what a hot girl like me should be doing maybe you could do that if you're a hot girl you could do that but this hot girl cannot do that so I thank God that I found my course I thank God that I tapped into data analytics and I love it even though yeah sometimes it could be difficult I love it I feel like I'm learning something I feel like I'm using my brain and I get yeah with pharmacy you obviously learn stuff and use your brain but when I was in pharmacy I felt like I was 
cramming the stuff just cramming to pass my exams but doing data analytics i feel like i'm actually learning i'm learning about cyber security i'm learning about coding i'm learning about networks i'm learning about a lot of things that i can use in my day-to-day -day life where i can use to analyze stuff it's really allowed me to upskill myself in several aspects so currently i'm on a year off of uni and i'm working for the year i work in sales and marketing at an it software company and when i say this to people they're like oh my gosh i did door to door sales i hate that oh my gosh i can't believe you do that i don't do door to door sales nothing wrong with door to door sales by the way get your money up, but I don't do door to door sales. I work in sales and marketing and most of it is done on my laptop, in office or at home. I've been blessed with so many opportunities from this. I've been public speaking at events. I did my first debut speech, well my first speech in the industry at a Google conference, a Google developer conference in Istanbul last year. If that's not blessed, I don't know what is. Before that, if you told me that oh I had to speak in front of 10 people, I would have said nope. 20 people, nope. I started my channel because I wanted to just speak to just a camera. That's it, I don't really wanna to talk to people. I wanna to speak to a camera, I don't wanna to talk to people. That's one of the reasons I started my channel anyways, but now I'm much better with that. I'm open to speaking to people and I actually love it. But I wasn't the type of girl that would be going around just speaking to people, to crowds, to groups. When I spoke at that Google conference, they were loving it. They were loving it, they were clapping. I was thinking, oh, is it me you're clapping for? That's great, that is lovely. Then after that, I started volunteering at other conferences. I started speaking at other conferences. I've done interviews with founders and well-known figures in my industry. And it's just shocking how far I've come in a matter of months. As I got baptized like two, three weeks ago. I would have never thought that I would get baptized two, three weeks ago. It just happened. And I've been baptized before in the past in the Catholic church, but I no longer go to a Catholic church. So I decided, let me get baptized again. And also as an adult with my own understanding, let me just do that. I say that to say that everything that's happened in my life right now, since I've turned 22, with all the blessings and all the grace I've received, I should have known it was coming, but I didn't realize because I couldn't see. I couldn't see straight, but now I see straight. I should have always known. A couple of years ago, I was doing a little Bible study session and I realized actually living life but what's my purpose and I used to think oh YouTube is my purpose because I actually have such a strong passion for YouTube I know I don't post that much but I have such a strong passion for YouTube it's always been my thing I love vlogging I love recording I love recording on my camera I love speaking to you guys I love engaging with you guys YouTube is always my thing so I thought yeah that's my passion that's my purpose but how can YouTube be your purpose it sounds quite empty to me but at the time I thought yeah YouTube's my purpose of course of course it's my purpose. In that Bible study, God revealed to me that I will find my purpose when I turn 22. That sounds a bit bizarre, like why 22? Why 22? Why, what are we waiting for? Why not now? But he was like, yeah, you're gonna find your purpose when you turn 22. So I've always had that in the back of my head and I've just been living life like whatever, just calm, stress-free because I know when I turn 22, life is about to be and I will find my purpose. So the week before I hit 22, I started thinking, oh my gosh, like I'm turning 22, what's gonna happen? In my mind, I thought, boom, the second I hit 22, life's gonna be different. I hit 22 and I realized, oh, maybe I should have been preparing for life to be different. Maybe I should have been doing stuff beforehand so life would be different. Like, maybe I should have been putting in work so life could actually be different. So when I hit 22, I realized I had to actually take accountability for everything I want in my life to change, every single little thing. It could be something as little as your style, if you keep wearing the same clothes you have, it's not going to change. You need to actively get up and try new styles and change your closet and change your outfits. It could be something as small as the people you associate with. Yeah, they might seem fun, they might seem lit, but if you don't change the people you associate with, that's all you're going to be surrounded by. And you're the only one that can change that. They're not going to change that for you and they're not going to change themselves for you. You need to literally change the people that you are surrounded by. Not saying that you should go out and do this, but if that's a change that you want, it's not going to happen unless you get up and do it yourself. If you've been here for a couple of years, you know that I went viral in 2022, January, for putting the UK on keto, low carb diet. Yes, I put the UK on. I'm going to say that hands down. Before that, no one was doing keto. I remember saying to my friend, oh, I'm doing keto. And he said, oh, keto is so 2016. What are you doing keto for? Yeah, yeah. But then as soon as I posted the video and it went viral, all I was hearing was keto, this keto, that keto, babe, keto. Everybody approached me saying keto, keto, keto. And you were trying to say it's so 2016. Okay. Okay, buddy. Ever since I lost weight from doing keto, I gained it all back. Probably that same year, or the year after, because I was just enjoying life a bit too much. I think when I was in Paris, my friend took a video of me, and I thought, I don't really like this video. Like, my bum looks good, but my belly looks just as big, and I don't like that. So, I made it my mission to lose weight. Not my mission, but I told myself, I need to actually level up everything in my life. I need to change everything in my life. 
I wasn't impressed about my weight, but is that what I look like for real? That needs to change. Every single thing I wanted to change, I decided I'm going to change it. And on this journey, I've been strengthening my relationship with God and in the back of my mind, I've had it that he told me when I'm 22, my life is gonna change. Everything I've been scared to do, I've been doing it since I turned 22, I've been doing it. Public speaking, I've been doing it. Solo trips, I've been, wait, I've been doing it. I have a, a big solo trip coming up soon. And for me, this could be life changing, but we'll see when it happens. Everything I've been wanting to do, once I turned 22, best believe I started doing it. Is this a life update or is this motivation? I don't know, but I hope that this little piece of life update is helping somebody because my life has really been changing for the better. I've been so consistent in the gym. It's not even a thing where it's like, oh, I have to go gym today. It's I get to go gym today. If you've read Atomic Habits, then you know what I'm talking about. I get to go gym today. I have the finances to go gym today. I've got the able body to go gym today. I get to make aesthetic treadmill videos today at the gym. I get to look the baddest in the gym with my matching set. I get to do all that. I've been picking up hobbies. I've always been a hobby babe. My parents always made sure that me and my brother stayed having hobbies. So we used to take ice skating classes when we were younger. I stopped skating for years. I literally forgot how to skate completely. But I told myself this year, you know what? I'm picking it back up because I know the love I used to have for ice skating, it can't die just like that. So I've been doing ice skating classes since January. Watch me on the rink. Watch me on the rink. Soon I'll be on Dancing on Ice. Don't play with me. Please pick up a hobby, find yourself, be childlike, be happy how you used to be when you were younger bring that back feed your inner child a big mindset shift that i've had since i've turned 22 as well is that i'm understanding that i'm worthy and i feel like i'm more confident in saying that i'm worthy to receive the blessings and things i deserve in life because i've actually been putting in work so of course i'm worthy give it to me i feel like before when i was going viral on tiktok it was back to back viral 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 so when brands were contacting me trying to do promo trying to do pay collabs all of that i wouldn't really want to do it because i'll be thinking me like are you sure that most people might be thinking oh if i got collab i would jump on that wall why wouldn't i do that but when you're actually in that predicament you'll understand what i'm talking about i'll be looking at the collabs like mm, me what i won't even be replying to them i'll leave them on red i wasn't ready i wasn't prepared but i feel like maybe because my virality was by accident and i wasn't putting in work i was just recording and just talking and i felt like i wasn't worth the collabs which is insane to say I feel like recently the brands that have been contacting me align with my personal brand, align with me I know what's for me, I know what's not for me and I can say this confidently because I'm confident in who I am in Christ so no one can tell me who I am, no one can tell me who I'm not I'm sure of who I am I'm so sure to the point where other people can see it too so when the brands that are contacting me contact me they literally align I got reached out to by HelloFresh last week and they said oh we want to collab with you Hello Fresh and me, we go together real bad. So real bad. And it's obvious because through my personal brand and you can see that because my personal brand is literally me. Before I felt like, yes, I'm a Christian girl, but also I love the life. And when I say the life, I mean I love the world. Christian girl, but I love the world. Christian girl, but I love the And it's like, when you're like that, your personal branding is shaky because you are shaky. And then shaky brands are contacting you, random brand, the type of brands that are contacting you, why are you contacting me? For what? When you're confident in who you are and you have good, strong personal branding, other people can see that, other people perceive that, they take that in and they move accordingly. Someone asked me, how are you able to stay on track and stick to your daily goals and routines? I like to make to-do lists. Most of my weeks revolve around work, ice skating, gym, hanging out with my friends, going to church, doing Bible study, networking. One thing about me, I'm a networker. I am a serious networker. If there's a networking event and I'm not there, it's not the right one to be at. I'll say that for free. Unless you're in a different path in life. If you're at a networking event and you don't see me there, it's the wrong one. It's the wrong one. It's the wrong one. One thing about me, I'm a networker. I'm a networker. I love it. I love the hustle. I love it. That's normally what I do, but since I know I have my set weekly routines, if I'm doing anything out of the normal, I'll add it onto a to-do list and I'll follow it through, tick it off, make sure I'm doing it in order of importance and I'll add times as well so I know how long it will take roughly and if I don't do it that day, it's fine, not the end of the world, I'll do it the next day. One thing that has helped me significantly, you need to take baby steps. If you're someone that just doesn't have a routine at all, you need to make a list of what your priorities are and time of day you want to do that. Have it in mind that there's a time when I do this thing. So for me, for example, 
with gym, how I'm able to stay consistent is I tell myself the time I go gym is the earliest time possible. Now, all my days look slightly different, so this could fluctuate. All my days do look slightly different, so this could fluctuate. So for example, on Monday, I always work from home. So if I wake up at 6 a.m., trust me, I'm getting ready to leave and be at the gym by like 6.30 because that's the earliest available time possible. If I wake up and I realize, wait a second, why am I scrolling on TikTok? Why am I scrolling on TikTok? Why am I on Instagram right now? I'm on Snap right now, watching that video I posted 12 hours ago. Get up. You can literally watch on the treadmill, no? I tell myself, go to the gym as early as you possibly can. When I do go into the office, I do go to the office quite early, so I can't go to the gym on those days. But if the earliest time I can get to the gym is 6 p.m., then 6 p.m. is the time I will be at the gym. And by going the earliest time possible, you just knock it off your list. And I feel like everyone should start gym or start an activity or start an active hobby because it's great for your mental health and it teaches you discipline as well. When I started gym, I didn't have much discipline. I did not have much discipline. And yes, I wanted to lose weight, but one of the main things I wanted to do was build my discipline because once you build discipline in one aspect of your life, you build respect for yourself, respect to show up. For example, you're disciplined enough to know to get to work on time every day because you don't want to lose your job right but when it comes to stuff you need to do for yourself you step back and you you act lazy and you don't take yourself serious if you don't respect yourself who's going to respect you when i say i go gym i could go gym six days a week when i first started i was going seven days a week i would go ice skating finish ice skating at nine and go gym right after you need to build discipline and i would advise you to do it in an active way that's what's really going to push you physically and mentally and once you get through that phase it becomes a habit so first it's going to be discipline slash motivation but then after that it's going to become a habit it's going to become part of your lifestyle you don't go gym and you start thinking oh i need to i need to hop on a treadmill so that's one thing that really helps me and in terms of sticking to your daily goals and your routines you need to know what you want for yourself if you don't know what you want for yourself you're gonna go for anything for example i'm such a busy babe i've got a lot of things i need to do i'm an ice skater i'm an ice skater for fun but i'm an ice skater I need to make sure I'm going ice skating every single week because if not, I'm going to fall off. And it's very easy to lose your skills on the ice and it takes a while to pick them back up if you don't go. So I make sure I go every week and if I can't go every week, I'll find a way to still go because I just have to go. When it comes to creating content, that's one thing I need to be more disciplined on on YouTube because editing takes me so long, so I just avoid it. I have a thing you focus on each day in your routine. So for me, Wednesdays, my priority is ice skating. Anything can happen anything can happen by the end of the day i'm gonna ice skate on wednesday and that's for sure on monday it might be going gym i wouldn't say that it is i do go gym every monday but it could it could be going gym on sunday my priority is church anything could happen anything could happen but on that sunday i'm going to church and the only reason i wouldn't go to church is if i'm out of the country and even with that being said i will still send my pastor a message i'll be like hey pastor sorry i'm not gonna be like i'm still gonna keep in touch i'll message people from church i'll be like hey miss you see you next week because at the end of the day i'm there in spirit so let's talk marriage let's talk marriage i know this came out randomly but let's talk marriage simply because i just spoke about my pastor i just spoke about church and recently i had a conversation with my pastor about courting because i've never been courted before it's always date state state dating 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 i've had good relationships long term i say long term i'm very young but when i say long term i mean like two plus years all of that all of that i've had lengthy-ish relationships since they had their time they had their place but i have never experienced courting i don't know a thing about courting i don't know what it looks like i don't know the form it comes in so i had a conversation with my pastor about that and it's so crazy because i, I used to see myself as one of those people that doesn't really care about marriage might not want to get married not really too fast but it's been called upon me that i'm due to be a wife and the crazy thing was i didn't know who to i just knew that i'm due to be a wife and due to be one soon. Of that conversation about quoting with my pastor, he gave me quite a few tips and I'm just going to give you some tips based on what I've been experiencing. Treat it as a friendship, get to know each other on a friendly level, make sure you guys both have pure intentions. It's not going to work if you're unequally yoked because you're going to have a different idea, be on different pages, it's just going to cause problems and stress. So you need to be pushing each other or not even pushing each other but you need to be aligned with each other on that same walk on your faith on that journey and the only position you should be taking each other is a better one so if one of you guys is making the other one backslides you're gonna have to forget about it because that's just not gonna work as i said earlier now that i'm confident in who i am in christ i can really criticize who i was before not to say she's a bad girl because it's still me at the end of the day but who i was before is just 
I used to love off a lifestyle babe not, not just any type of lifestyle babe but I used to like the guys with the nice cars the long money the fun life soft life all that good stuff because that screams me like I'm an Ibo babe the the more I know who I am in Christ I know what matters to me for real I know what I don't really care about I know what I should care about and what I shouldn't care about don't try to step in the whole dating as a Christian scene or courting scene if you're not confident in who you are what you expect out of a relationship if you're someone that still loves of the lifestyle and when I say that you know exactly what I mean obviously you can be a Christian and still be a lifestyle babe but you can't be a Christian and your top priority is being a lifestyle babe find your confidence in Christ and when you find your confidence in Christ it will literally be unwavering because who can tell you about you and who can move you nobody can move you also when you're confident in who you are you're able to differentiate a good thing and a great thing for example I really had a good opportunity I used to be the live stream host for Shea Moisture I'm sure you guys would have seen so I was working on TikTok doing their live streams I was their main host but that looks good on the outside but when you weigh out the pros and cons and you know what's for you and you know what's not for you you know when to redirect yourself to something better it might not seem better at first but trust me it gets better is this even a life update or is this me just giving you guys advice i think it's kind of like advice but life updates down i'm gonna record another video soon because i have so much more to say but if you're on your level up journey or you're, or you're in your wellness era or you're just looking for a change and you want to just get up and make that change and be accountable for yourself and be accountable for your destiny and your life then follow me on that journey follow us on that journey and subscribe so you don't miss the next video like and comment leave your questions in the comment section down below as well because i will be recording another video i didn't really answer you guys' questions they weren't really giving life update they were they were giving make another video which is what i'm gonna do thank you so much for watching 